Back in May 2023, me and Amy did the Everest Base Camp trek. A famous 10 day hike from Lukla in the Himalayas up to Everest Base Camp and back again. We've made it. Anyone who's ever climbed Everest from the Nepal side has passed through here. The most common question that I get asked by people that are planning to do this hike is what to pack. So I wanted to make a video addressing this question and sharing my own packing list for the Everest Base Camp trek. So I'll start with the three most essential items. The first is your backpack. Your guide will usually provide you with a duffel bag that your porters will transport from tea house to tea house. So you're gonna need a day bag that will carry all of your stuff that you're gonna need during the day. So around 15 to 20 liters should be more than enough. At the start of each day, we have to pack everything that we need for the day into our day packs. And everything that we don't need goes into these duffel bags. Rather than bringing a day bag with me, I decided to hire a bag when I was in Kathmandu. Not only is it cheaper, but it's also less wasteful than buying something that you're only gonna use on this trek. With your bag, you need to make sure that you've got good back support and ideally a waist strap. You're gonna be wearing this for 10 days, so you need to make sure that you are comfortable and you're not causing yourself any back injuries. My backpack costed around $1 per day for the duration of the trek. The second most important item is your sleeping bag. So you're gonna want a four season sleeping bag and a comfort rating of around minus 15 degrees. Again, this was another thing that we decided to rent from Kathmandu. And it was also around a dollar a day, I think. And the third most important item is your footwear. There is a big debate around whether to wear boots or trail runners. And my advice would be to wear whatever you're most comfortable in. I was really unsure as I saw loads of conflicting advice online. But in the end, I decided to go with trail runners and I'm really pleased that I did. The terrain's not really that treacherous, so you don't really need ankle support. And several other people in our group who decided to wear boots complained about getting blisters. So I felt really happy with my choice then because my feet were fine the whole time. So it's obviously up to you, but if I were doing this again, I would stick with the trail runners. So those are the three most important items. And now I'll move on to clothing. So starting with the innermost layer, I brought a pair of thermals with me, so a thermal top and thermal trousers. Unless you get very cold, you're unlikely to need to wear these whilst hiking, so these also doubled up as my pyjamas. But if you think you're going to need to wear these whilst hiking, I would recommend bringing a second pair to sleep in. I brought four t-shirts with me, two long sleeve, two short sleeve, a pair of lightweight hiking trousers. I'd normally always hike in shorts, whatever the weather, but our guide advised us that in some of these villages it's considered culturally inappropriate to wear shorts that come above the knees, so I would leave those at home next time. One lightweight fleece top, and this was my outermost layer pretty much every day. A mid-layer jacket for insulation and wind protection. So I brought my synthetic Patagonia jacket, which is really light but really warm and it packs down really small. <laughs> First snow on the Everest Base Camp trek. So cool. A waterproof layer, which is really important because if you get wet, you can get cold really quickly. I brought a thin waterproof jacket with me so that I could wear it over the top of lots of layers if it was really cold, or just a couple of layers if it was warm. So it's more versatile than bringing a big heavy raincoat with you. And then finally, the last layer was a warm winter down jacket. So this is a really thick winter jacket that you'd only wear in the coldest temperatures. I hired mine from Kathmandu, again for around one or two dollars per day, and I never used it. However, I would advise still bringing it with you because you never know how cold it's gonna get at night. And it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So those are all the layers that I brought with me and I could just add or remove layers based on how warm or cold I was. So in addition to those layers, I also brought with me underwear. I think I brought about six pairs, four for hiking in and two for sleeping in. And of course you can wash these as you go along. So you don't need one for every single day. I had four pairs of wool socks, three for hiking in and one for wearing around the tea houses and sleeping in. Hats, I had a cap for lower altitude and for sun protection, and then a beanie for the colder temperatures higher up the mountain. Gloves, I bought a pair whilst I was in Kathmandu and I was really glad that I did. 
as your hands can get really cold, especially when you're using hiking poles. And obviously if you're going in winter, you may want a thicker pair of gloves to go over the top of these as well. Sunglasses, it can get really bright, so eye protection is really important. A buff, I was so glad that I brought this with me. It's obviously really helpful for keeping warm, but it was also very useful for dust protection. The track can get really dusty, so it was great to have this to stop me from inhaling dust as I went along. We have to wear these buffs as the ground is really dusty and it can cause problems with chest infections and throat infections if you breathe too much of it in. And finally, I brought a pair of sandals with me to wear around the tea houses and to give my feet a rest from the trail runners. So those are all the clothes I brought with me. You can obviously adapt it based on your personal preferences. So if you're a naturally warm hiker or cold hiker, for example, or if you're hiking in winter, you're obviously gonna need more warm layers. Now onto toiletries and medicines. In terms of toiletries, I brought a toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, hand sanitizer, and a spare toilet roll. There are showers the whole way along the route, so also bring shampoo and body wash as well. And the other thing that I brought that I'm so glad that we did was baby wipes. It can get really cold at the higher altitudes, so it's not always advisable to shower every night as it can be quite difficult to warm up again. So it was good to have baby wipes to freshen up on the days when I wasn't showering. You're gonna to need to bring a first aid kit with you. And this is really important because your guides are not allowed to give you medication. So you need to make sure that you have everything that you might need with you. Ideally it should contain lip balm that's got sunscreen in it because your lips will get very chapped. Sunscreen, all the usual things that you'd have in a first aid kit. So plasters, tape, painkillers, antiseptic cream, bite cream, mosquito spray, and any additional prescription drugs you might be taking. And then I'd also recommend bringing Imodium and rehydration powder, as diarrhea is super common. <laughs> so it's always good to have those. The next really important thing to bring is water purification tablets or drops. The water in the Everest region is untreated. So you're gonna need these to make the water drinkable. And the main thing I'll say about these is you're gonna need a lot more than you think you're gonna need. We brought a pack of about 30 tablets with us and we probably ended up needing double that. You drink about three or four liters a day and over 10 days, that means you're gonna need at least 30 to 40 tablets per person. You can buy these quite cheaply in Kathmandu or on the mountain, but I would recommend bringing them with you from home. We used somebody else's purification tablets that they bought in Kathmandu, and they had a really strong chemically taste to them, whereas the ones we brought from home, we couldn't taste at all. The other medication to consider is Diamox, which is an altitude sickness medication. There's a lot of debate around whether to take Diamox or not. The side effects are pretty undesirable. It makes you need to pee a lot, which is not ideal when you're trying to retain as much water as you can. And apparently it also leaves a really bad taste in your mouth, which is pretty nasty from what I've heard. So the common advice is to not take it unless you absolutely have to. We've been at around 3,400 meters for the last couple of days now, and the altitude hasn't really started to affect us yet. Apparently at over 2,500, you start to look out for the signs of altitude sickness, which is headaches, breathlessness, nausea, things like that. But fortunately, it doesn't seem like anyone in the group is feeling much more than just a mild headache at the moment. I think as we get higher up, we'll start to see more people feeling the effects. Although I am feeling a little bit breathless now. <laughs> we decided not to bring any with us and that if we needed it, we would buy it when we were on the mountain. However, of our group, those who had taken Diamox the entire time really didn't have any issues with altitude sickness whereas pretty much all of us who didn't started to get problems at around 4,000 meters. So by the time I thought that I might need it, I was already way past the point where any Diamox was available to buy. So I think if I was doing this again, I would bring Diamox with me so that I'd have it if I needed it. So that is all the toiletries and medicine. Now I'll move on to the other essentials. You're gonna drink a lot of water, so you're gonna need a reusable water bottle. I brought my one litre Nalgene bottle with me and I ended up having to buy a second one litre plastic bottle so I could rotate between the two. You have to wait a while for the water purification tablets to take effect. So it's good to always have one bottle of water purifying whilst you're drinking from the other one. So we'll give these bottles to our quarters and they'll fill it up with water from a stream and then we have to use a water purification tablet 
which makes it safe to drink. It's a lot cheaper and better for the environment than buying bottles like this every day. And a top tip, fill your water bottle with hot water before bed and then take it into your sleeping bag with you. So it will keep you warm at night and then in the morning you have a bottle of purified water ready to drink. A waterproof bag cover, if it rains or snows you're going to want the contents of your bag to stay dry. A travel towel, nothing too big or weighty. A camera, this obviously isn't essential but the landscapes are so stunning you're going to want to have one with you so I would consider this an essential. And then in my electricals bag I had a charger for my phone, spare batteries and SD cards for my camera, a travel adapter for the outlets and a power bank. Now above Namcha Bazaar you start having to pay to use electricity so having a fully charged power bank with me above Namcha Bazaar meant that I didn't have to pay for charging. You're going to need cash in rupees and dollars. I would say about two or three hundred dollars in total is probably about right. You're going to need this for paying for most things on the mountain plus you're going to need cash to tip your porters with. So yeah, about two or three hundred dollars should be enough. And then on top of that, all of your important documents. So your passport, your insurance information is really important, especially if you get into trouble and you need a helicopter evacuation. It's good to have your insurance documents with you and any visas or vaccination proof that you need as well. Now, there are a few extra things that wouldn't be considered essential, but I would still definitely recommend bringing with you. The first is earplugs. I didn't bring any with me, but I really wish I did. The wind can get really loud at night. And in one of the tea houses, there was a group of dogs outside our room and they barked all the way through the night. So I do wish that I'd had earplugs for that night. Here are the dogs that were keeping us awake all night with their barking. A torch or a headlamp. So you're gonna need a source of light for navigating the tea houses at night and for hiking early in the morning. You can obviously use your phone, but ideally you want to conserve as much battery as you can as you have to pay for charging up there. So a headlamp is ideal. Hiking poles, these are really good for protecting your knees, especially when you're going back down. We got given ours for free by our guide, but you can hire them for relatively cheap in Kathmandu. A sleeping bag liner. Now this is useful for two reasons. It gives you an extra layer of warmth at night, but if you are hiring your sleeping bag, it also helps to keep you and the sleeping bag clean. A form of entertainment, so a book or a Kindle, a journal, a pack of cards. You're gonna spend a lot of time in tea houses. So it's really nice to have a way to entertain yourself that isn't using your phone, especially as you have to pay for Wi-Fi in the tea houses. And playing a game of cards or Uno or Yahtzee is a really nice way to bring everyone together in the tea houses. Yes! And the final thing on my list is snacks. So you're going to expend a lot of energy on this hike. So it's important that you keep yourself fueled as you go along. There are lots of places to buy snacks along the route, but the higher up you get, the more expensive they get. So if you get a chance to stock up on stuff in Kathmandu, it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you're buying stuff in the mountains. So this was my packing list for the Everest Base Camp Trek. Obviously, this is just my list. Everyone is going to be different. Some people are going to need more. Some people can get away with less. But I feel like this is a good starting point that you can adapt based on your own personal preferences and needs. I really hope you found this video useful. Leave any questions or comments you have below and I'll do my best to try and answer them. And if you are doing the Everest Base Camp Trek yourself, I hope you have an amazing time. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more hiking and travel content and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.